Good morning, ladies. You may be seated. All right, we are so blessed, aren't we, with our worship team? Let's just hear it for our worship team. So, good morning. It's great to see you, ladies. Um, I've been gone since the 1st of June, and honestly, just to see you guys is such a blessing to me to be here. Um, I do have to disagree with Pastor Gerald, though. Uh, on the record, I don't know if he's in here or not, but um, he said something Sunday. He said that Idahoans do not like Californians. Well, I'm from Idaho, and I love you ladies. So he was wrong. And I'll tell you, you guys are beautiful ladies. There's things that they don't know about you in Idaho, that, um, that Californians in Yucca Valley love Jesus. You really do. It blows me away, the love for Jesus in this place and the boldness for Jesus. So I have been blessed. Our family, um, two and a half years ago, started praying to be available, to be used by Jesus. We basically said, Lord, you're our shepherd and we wanna be used by you. And our crazy God that we serve said, you're going to Yucca Valley. So we moved to Yucca Valley two years ago and served here for the past two years. At that time, it was my husband and my son. And we have been so blessed to be amongst you ladies, to be part of Women's Fellowship, to be led by a pastor and his wife that are bold and that love Jesus so much. We're blessed here. We have this summer have been traveling around, going to different churches and serving at different churches. And I cannot find anything that even remotely compares to this place. So thank you for, thank you. Thank you for letting me be here with you today. Um, I have been studying Psalms 23 all summer long for you ladies. And God put it on my heart as soon as Marilee asked me to speak. And so I've been studying it and I've been praying for each one of you. And I know that if you're, if you're sitting here today, it's because God has brought you here. So as I've been studying this, I've been learning all about trusting the Lord as my shepherd and to not fear. And then Lori comes up Sunday, and she announces that Kim White will be the speaker on Tuesday. And the first thing that I do is I start to panic that I can't teach. And I've been studying for three months to not have fear because God is with me. But yet, how quickly we forget and we start to panic. You know, I want to be bold. That's what God has just put on my heart in these last months, that I want to be bold for Christ. And Paul, amazing Paul, said in Ephesians, he says in 619, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Paul was sitting in prison when he said he wanted to be bold. That's amazing boldness, ladies. And don't we want to be bold like Paul, like Jesus? Um, so I'm here today together. I don't have it together just like, well, I'm here with you guys today. And just like you, I don't have it together either. But I know one thing for sure, that the Lord is my shepherd. So I'd like us today, since there's only six verses, if you want to turn to Psalms 23, I thought we'd just read it together in unity. Okay, it's a pretty basic psalm. So Psalms 23, it says, you can read with me, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, and your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let's pray. Father God, I just thank you so much for this morning. Lord, I thank you for meeting us here today. Lord, I pray that I would be just your vessel. Lord, there would be nothing of me but all of you. Lord, I pray that, Lord, as we exit this room, Lord, that we would be different people, that we would love you more, that we would desire to be more like you. 
And Lord, that fears would not get in the way of what you would have us to do, the path that you would have for each one of us. So Lord, thank you. Thank you for loving us. Lord, thank you for calling us your daughters. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, so let's, um, I'm just going to start out. Psalms 23 is actually listed as probably one of the most loved, most used, most memorized um, books, chapters in the Bible that is often, as we know, is clung to at times of death, often used at celebrations of life. It's six simple verses, yet you're going to see there is so much there for us. It's recognized and loved by so many, yet unfortunately, often hard to live by. So we know that it was written by David, and most, most commentaries believe that David was a little bit older in life. As you read through the Psalms, you're gonna see that David was experiencing many blessings, many hardships, and also it appears to be over, he's had a lot of pain in his life also. He knew much about the characteristics of a shepherd and a sheep because we know that David was a shepherd and he led his sheep. So chapter 23 talks about that often. Um, We know from studying that chapter 22, chapter 23, and 24 go right together. And really a person should read the three chapters together because in chapter two, if you would have read that, you would have seen that it talks about that Christ is our shepherd. And it talks about the cross and the need for the cross. And then it also talked in chapter 22 about our past. But what we're going to look at today in chapter 23 is that he is our great shepherd and that we're going to look at the Christian life and, ladies, how we live this life. And finally, that we're going to see that we have been delivered from sin, that we're no longer in chapter 22, but we are chapter 23, that we have been restored, and we're going to talk about being restored in Christ. And then finally, if we were to look at 24, and I encourage you, encourage you to read chapter 24, it talks about that he's the chief shepherd and that Christ is going to conquer all of the world. And finally, about our future glorification. So today we're going to, we are going to look at chapter 23 as we just read. So it starts out, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Throughout scripture, we see many examples time and time, time again of the reference of the Lord as our shepherd and that we are the sheep. Jesus says in John 10, 11, that he is the great shepherd and that he gives life. He gives life to us. He gives life to the sheep. Another favorite one of mine is John 10, 27. And he says, my sheep hear my voice and know them and they follow me. We know Jesus's voice because we follow him. David personally said, it's interesting, it says the Lord is my shepherd. He didn't say that he was the shepherd, but he said that he was my shepherd. Spurgeon says it best, he says, the Lord is my shepherd. He is a shepherd to me. He cares for me, he watches over me, and he protects me. And the same thing with you. He is your shepherd, he loves you, He protects you, and he cares for you. And that's what we're going to see today. Our shepherd cares for us. He provides everything we need. We're going to look at that. He protects us from our enemies. He leads us where we need to go. I believe in this room, most of us all want to be led by the Lord. And today, we're going to see how to be led by the Lord. Um, The very first thing that we're going to see in order to be a shepherd, that we must be willing to be his sheep. We must desire to be led. We have to desire to have a shepherd in our life. And we must trust him. So six quick points to remember about our shepherd is that he knows our situation. He knows exactly what's going on in your life today. He knows our challenges. He knows what's, what challenge you're faced with maybe this very day. He knows our family. And I know a lot of us have families that are difficult maybe. And God knows that. He knows everything about us. He knows our financial situation. For us, the beginning of school is sometimes the most difficult time when all the expenses come. 
But he knows exactly. He knows what your struggle is as you sit here today. He knows what bill needs to be paid. And he is our shepherd. He is our great shepherd. He knows our health issues. So often with health issues, we don't know. The, the doctors don't know our health issues. I think of Brandon Sessler that we've been praying for. He wrote on Facebook a couple days ago. He said, probably the most difficult thing is not knowing. But you know, God knows. God knows exactly what's going on with Brandon. So I do just encourage you to continue to pray for that family. What an example of somebody in the middle, in the middle of fire, but yet praising the Lord. So pray for that family. But God does. God knows our health, even when doctors do not. He knows our weaknesses and he knows our strengths because he is my shepherd and he is your shepherd. The second part of verse one said, I shall not want. This is a difficult one for me because I love to want. I love new things. I love stuff. Um, but what does it really mean to say, I shall not want? If you actually look at the meaning, it says that um, never lacking anything. I need nothing. I am content. I am at rest. I'm satisfied. It's both a declaration and a decision. Listen to that, ladies. It's a decision. We have to decide to be content. Um, often we say, but what about this? But what about that? And God says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. We have to choose to be content. I think of the military women here and the difficulty of moving place to place and being content. Think about being placed in 29 palms and being content. Um, that is when we have to say, sometimes even out loud, Lord, you are my shepherd. I shall not want. And remind ourselves daily that I am safe, I am secure, and I am protected by my great shepherd, even when I don't feel like I am, that all my needs are met, that he will direct me. You may be thinking right, ne right now, well, actually, Kim, my needs are not being met right now. I have stuff going on in my life, and I am not, my needs are not being met. I can't pay my bill right now. Maybe you're here today with that going on. Maybe your marriage is struggling and you don't feel like all your needs are met. Maybe you're in a blended family. Maybe you have a wayward child waiting for that prodigal son to return. Well, God still says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Um, just recently, we took a group of about 20 high school kids down to Mexico. And we spent a week down there serving and going into orphanages. And you know, a typical, typical average family in Mexico makes $12 a day. They struggle with drugs and alcohol. They have a very corrupt political, pr corrupt police system. And deport a lot of people that have been deported, a lot of men that have been deported and their families over here in the US and they're not with their families anymore. And you see them and you think, wow, can they be content? And I'll tell you, I met with so many people that love Jesus and they're content and they can say, the Lord is my shepherd, I, I shall not want because they're finding their contentness in Christ. They're not finding it in things. Um, it's very easy for all of us to look at the material things, but that's not, what, that's not what David's talking about. He's talking about the riches that we find only in our shepherd. I wanna look at real quick what Paul says in Philippians 4.11. It says, Philippians 4.11 says, not, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. And then he goes on in 19, I wanna read 19 and it said, and my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. 
That is what our God does. He supplies everything, everything that we need. Contentment is learned. We must choose to trust our God, to know that he is our protector. Um, one final example from Tijuana. When you're in Playas, Tijuana, where we were serving, when you're on the beach, you can actually, you're right there on the beach and there's a fence that they have built and it's about maybe 100 yards out into the ocean and there's slats and you can see right through it. So when you're sitting in Tijuana, you can sit across and you can see San Diego very clearly. You can see the homes, you can see, you can see the big buildings, you can see people even on the beaches. But choosing to, content, to be content means that as you sit there, you don't see what you don't have, but you see what God has supplied you with and the thankfulness that you have for being exactly where God has placed you. And that is what I was seeing in Tijuana. So what a blessing. So the shepherd gives his sheep this time to be content and to find rest. And that's what he desires for us, ladies. Verse 2 says, he makes me lie down in green pasture. He leads me besides the still waters. The shepherd gives his sheep rest and refreshment. As we follow Christ, we need to give ourselves rest and refreshment. We need nourished. I couldn't stand up here without feeding myself first. I would be nothing to you had I just read Psalms 23 and didn't spend time myself with the Lord. We must take care of ourselves, ourselves by spending time with the Lord, by um, lying down in green pasture, and he leads us to the still waters. We need to be spiritually nourished, ladies. It says that he leads me besides the still waters. If we follow, Jesus so desires to lead, lead us. We must have fellowship, we must have communion, and we must have intimacy with him. One of my favorite times and one of the songs we were singing this morning is, um, Give Me Jesus, and it talks about in the morning and how to wake up in the morning and to arise and spend time with Jesus. And I know it's hard. It's very difficult. You that have toddlers, I had toddlers. I had two of them. And it was so hard to get up early because you've been up one or two times during the night maybe. But when we prioritize that time with Jesus, it blesses us and it nourishes us for what we need. And then there's seasons when we have teenagers and they're busy and they're running like crazy and all we do is run them. We are a, we are a bus that runs our kids and it, sometimes you're like, God, how do I have time to give you five minutes? But as we prioritize, God opens the door. God knows our situation. He knows exactly where you're at and what season that you're at, ladies. Um, it's funny, we are empty nesters for the first time in 22 years. And so this summer, honestly, for the first time, my husband and I, we were able to spend sometimes over an hour together in, in, in prayer and in God's word. And I can honestly tell you, we haven't done that in 22 years. We would maybe squeeze little things here and there, but we didn't have time. God, it didn't allow us because of our family situation, but what a blessing because in this season of our life, now God's blessed us time to spend together without children, without the disruptions. So be blessed wherever you're at. Know that God knows and he wants you to make time for him. Um, it says in verse three, as we go on, he restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sakes. Restores is a picture of a lost one. When I was a child, my mom had this picture that hung over our table, right beside our table, and it was a picture of all the sheep with Jesus holding the injured sheep. Do you remember that picture? I don't know if you've seen that. But that's what is restored, that Jesus loves each and every one of us, and he wants to restore every one of us. If there's 99 sheep and there's one missing, Jesus goes and finds it, and we're the same way. The, the restoration that he wants to give us he wants us to spend time in those green pastures. He wants us to be still by the water so that we can be restored. Also in the Bible, we see restored as being explained as being cast down, a time of deep despair, sad, emptiness, alone, hopeless, afraid, 
worthless and even rejected. And that is what the shepherd wants to do. So today, if you're wondering, or you're asking, God, I need restore. Our shepherd wants to restore you. So often, we don't, we don't know how to become restored. There was a season in my life when I was living, doing my own thing, and making very poor choices. And I remember I went to God, and I just said, God, forgive me for the things that I've done. But yet, for the next probably year or two, I would every time that I would do communion or every time that I would pray, I would bring that sin back up. And when we're restored, it's gone. It says the sin is gone from as far as the east and the west to the west that we are as white as sheep. And you know what? God has restored you. So if you're sitting here today and there's something that you're not letting go of, something in your past, you know who you are. I just encourage you to remember that, that he restores my soul and he leads me in the path of righteousness. Um, It says in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I will give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone ever snatch them up out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. Just as a shepherd watches his sheep, and he makes sure everyone is there, our shepherd watches us. It, the shepherd's job is not eight to five. The shepherd's job is from 24 seven, that he is watching us and waiting for us to be restored if we need restored in our life. We belong to him. Um, the second part of verse um, three said, he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Literal translation means that he leads me in the right path. Wherever he leads me, it's the right place where I'm supposed to be. Um, Like I said, I tried running my own life many times, and even still today, my husband and I will do something, and we'll be like, you know, we never even ask God. And God wants to be every part of our lives. So we're learning, we're trying to remember in every area to ask God to lead us. Um, It says, in fact, we all know this verse in Proverbs 3, 5, one of our favorite. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. Any more clear than that? Our own understanding is not the way to be. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. He leads us by his word. And even sometimes I know I have followed God, and still things mess, seem messed up. In the middle of it, we we're like, okay, I'm following the Lord, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, why is this so crazy? So I encourage you to remember, does it mean that we miss what our shepherd says? Not necessarily, because we're going to see that God's ways sometimes leads us through difficult times. We know the example of the, the fiery furnace, and those three were led into the furnace. God had a plan. We know that the Jews came out of Egypt after 400 years, but yet for 40 more, God had a different plan. Often God wills for this And he leads us this way so that we can become totally dependent on him. Max Licato says, the path of righteousness is narrow, winding trail up a steep hill. At the top of the hill is a cross. Isn't that true? Remember that Jesus is at the top of the hill. So we have seen that the Lord is our shepherd. We have seen that we are to lie down in green pastures and that we are to walk by still waters. Take that time. We've talked about our soul being restored and being led in right paths. Now the psalm will shift somewhat. And it's sometimes not the easy part because we're going to talk about in verse 4. It says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You, your rod and your staff, they shall comfort me. This is the, different, this is the difficult one because the, the, when you walk through the valley of shadow of death, it's often in these times the Palestinians would lead their sheep through the valleys. And it was a very tight, sometimes dangerous, dark valley. And that is what David is telling us, 
that we're going to go through these difficult times. The valley of deep darkness is actually um, mentioned nine times in the book of Job. And we know the book of Job is a difficult book with many trials. Just yesterday, I walked through the valley of death. Um, I received a call from my best friend that our dear friend was murdered. Christian woman was murdered and her brother was murdered and their son, her, her seven-year-old son, witnessed the whole thing and he called 911. It was from an ex-boyfriend that something went wrong. Um, she's a wonderful Christian woman. But there was that moment I thought to myself, God, why? I was afraid. I actually wrote down some notes last night because I was afraid and fear stepped in and I said, God, you say we have nothing to fear, and yet I fear. Sometimes we feel like we need an answer right now. I felt fear for the seven-year-old boy that witnessed the death. I felt fear for the victims, the mom and dad that got the call, my dear friends, that their son and daughter were shot. I felt fear for the custody of my friend's boys who has an, a father that's abandoned him already and now he's alone. He also has autism, so he has many needs. And so I felt fear. But David said, I will fear no evil. That's not just a bold statement because David went on and he says, he claimed, let me just read it, for I, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He didn't leave it there, he says, for you are with me. God was with me yesterday and God's gonna be with this family. And I actually was able to share Psalms 23 with the family yesterday because God's gonna get them through it. They love Jesus and he is gonna be difficult but you know what? God is with us. He never leads us. So as we go through those valleys, we have to cling to that, ladies, that our God is with us. Um, last week, I, I, we've been staying at the Bible College. We're here, our fam my husband and I are here for a few weeks just helping with the beginning of school and helping at the Bible College. So we have some students. We have Bible. If you're a Bible College student, raise your hand here. They're just starting to come in. There's a couple here today. You're, um, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be meeting them in the next few weeks, but I, I believe we're right at about 27 Bible colleges this year for this next coming year. And I just love these students. And I'll tell you, they are, they're amazing students. But we have a couple students that August 30th of last year began going next door to the care center. Nobody asked them to. Nobody is required. It's not even considered part of their ministry of their hours that they must serve. But yet, for almost a year, they have faithfully brought church to the care center every Wednesday at one o'clock. So I went with them last Sunday, or last Wednesday, sorry, and listened to them and heard them worship. And I saw ladies, older ladies and men come and listen and be blessed because they were hearing verse by verse God's word, and they were singing. And I met this sweet lady, and the lady said, I said, hi, my name is Kim, and I introduced me and myself, and she introduced herself, and she says, I have cancer, and I'm gonna die. And there was another Bible college student next to me, and he said, have you had any treatment? And the lady replied, yes, I did, but it did not work. But so what? I know where I'm going. And I was amazed. I was absolutely amazed because that lady had no fear. She knew exactly what God had planned for her. And I shared with her Psalms 23, and she knew it by heart, but she had no fear. That is living, trusting our shepherd. James 5.17 is one of my favorites. I love the book of James, but James 5.17 is so interesting, and I had never really caught it until just recently. It says in James 5.17, just one little part says, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. That's all it says. Elijah was a man with a nature like mine. Elijah, we know, was a prophet that was obedient. Elijah went through trials, but he was obedient and God blessed him and he prayed and the rain came. 
But in James, it says that he has a nature just like mine. He has a nature just like yours, that we are like Elijah, that the same power that lives in Elijah is in us, ladies. Is that, does it blow you away that the same power that was in Paul, in Moses, Peter, that just believed and prayed is in us? We have that same power. I don't want to live, live life wondering, if God is with me, then I'm gonna do this. We have two options. We can either say, I don't wanna go through the val- um, valley of shadow of death, or we can say, Lord, I'm ready for this adventure, whatever you have for me, and I'm gonna be blown away by the miracles you're gonna do as we go through it. And I know my friend, and I know her family, they're gonna get through this, and God is gonna be glorified through it. Just as the Sessler's family, God is being glorified through it. So remember when Moses told Aaron, Aaron, just go speak to the people, and what did Aaron say? I can't, I don't know how. And God said, just open your mouth and be used by me. And that's how I want to live. I hope that's how you want to live, ladies, to be fearless, to desire to be used um, by God. We need to encourage each other as sisters because so often, don't we sit here today and maybe, or sit in church and like, you're like, I want to start helping. I want to start doing something. And I'm going to share Jesus. And you're sitting in church and then you walk out the door and we completely forget. Or we even tell a friend, but then nothing comes of it. We need to encourage each other and build each other up to, yeah, you can serve. You should start doing that. You should start sharing, sharing the good news with coworkers. We need to encourage. This summer, we had, um, we had some of our friends come, and they have 17-month-olds, absolutely adorable, two of them. And um, they wanted to get up on the bed. And what they do, and they do this all the time, the mom says, the one will get down on its hands and knees, the other one crawls up, the other one then pulls his brother up. I was just amazed. On their own, they figure these things out. And ladies, that's what we need to do. We need to tug our sisters up, encourage each other, to little, uh, you know, childlike faith. And they did, and it was just so awesome to see them doing that. The only fear I ever want is of God saying, look what I could have done with you. Where would my life be if I had not taken the step of faith to move to Yucca Valley? My children's lives would be completely different because I have a son that has spent the last two years at JS and he loves Jesus and he's choosing now to follow Jesus and be in the ministry and help in any way. I have a daughter that loved Jesus before she came. She was at Bible college, but then continued in our Bible college and met her husband here and got married and blessed beyond. But imagine if my husband and I and son didn't take the step of faith. Where, how things would have been different, how God has blessed us because we took that step of faith. My God has delivered me through valleys. We went through a season of cancer in our family, but God was always there. And as people witnessed us go through it, and we had a peace like you can't imagine, my husband was told he has stage four cancer, and to prepare for the worst, and God gave us peace. And people witness and watch that there was a peace amongst us. And that's what God has for each one of us in here. Imagine the message. It would speak to the world. When people see us fearless, when people see us united, striving together side by side for the gospel, they would see courage. It's a clear sign of people secure in their shepherd when you see them going through trials and they are secure and at rest. Um, I want to live fearlessly. I want absolute peace and confidence in my shepherd. Remember, we have a nature just like Elijah. God is with us. Have faith in our forgiveness from God. Trust in the body and blood of Christ Jesus. He restores us. Verse, the second part of verse 4b, I told you there's a lot in Psalms 23. It says, um, you, I'm sorry, the rod and the staff, they comfort me. 
Rod is the protection. It's the staff that's guiding us. And God's going to guide us, and he's going to direct us, and he's going to correct us all through this walk that we're doing with him. And that's part of the process of having a shepherd. Verse 5 says, You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. So David's consider, continuing in the same thought. But he says, now the Lord is our host. A magnificent banquet is provided. The same shepherd that feeds us, protects us, protects us from our enemies, also has now prepared a feast for us in the presence of, your, of our enemies. He doesn't say the enemies are gone, but he has prepared a feast for us and we are the honored guest. It's in the presence of the enemies. I said that already twice. It's quite interesting. God's goodness abounds us right in the middle of our enemy. When we choose that the Lord is our shepherd, guess what, ladies? The enemy hates it. And God knows that. And he has prepared a feast for us so that Christians can sit down and eat as if they were in perfect peace in the middle of that trial. The Holy Spirit can calm the irritations of life. It can cause peace. It can restore us to growth and vitality. Daily, we need that Holy Spirit, just as I said before. We need that filling. We need that anointing. We need that constant refilling of God's word. Fill me today. Use me today. I know the days that I say to God, God, do something extraordinary in my life, do something abundant in my life are some of the best days I ever have. How God will bring people into my life that I'm just blown away by. Um, at this time, I'm gonna ask our worship team to come back up and we're gonna do something just a little bit different today. Um, I wanna take a little time just to share in communion and, and just to reflect on the Lord as our shepherd and what the Lord has to offer each one of us. That, that protection that he wants each one, of, for each one of us ladies. If there's something today that maybe you need restored, I would encourage you today to be restored and that it's forever gone, to no longer bring that back up. Maybe there's an area of your life that you have fear. Um, I, as I was here in the last couple of years, I worked in women's uh, I did women's counseling and marriage counseling and children's counseling, and there's a lot of fears out there. And maybe that's something. Maybe there's an insecurity today that's stopping you from stepping out and serving. There's so many needs at this place. As big as this church is, there's a lot of needs. And there's a place that God has just for you. And if God's stirring you, I would just pray that you would just seek the Lord to give you courage, to take away the fears. I don't enjoy being up here. It actually scares me to death. But I know the blessings that I receive to spend time studying God's word, and that's why I do it. Because as I spend time praying for you guys and, and studying God's word, I'm the one that's truly blessed. John 6, 35, said, Jesus says in that, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Life is a battle, ladies. Each day we are faced with new circumstances to wade through, to wade through, and we can become very weary in this walk with the Lord. We can feel alone. But I want you, the truth is that God has already prepared a table for us. We just read that in verse 5. It's already been prepared for us before our enemies. He has already fought the battle and won. He's already given us the victory. Sometimes we forget that. The battle, the battle has already been won. At these times, we must sit down at his table, though, and just thank him that our battle is won. We can live a fearless life. Remember his body and his blood and partake in this celebration. It's a table of victory. It's our time to remember what Jesus has already done on the cross. And now, that just like Elijah, what he wants to do with us now. 
We don't have to retreat in fear. We can boldly sit on the banquet ta- um, t- at the banquet table. So I want to finish with reading 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26. And it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, The cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, lady, as we just spend some time, I want to invite you, as the, lady, as the women start to sing, I invite you up to the tables. We have communion tables up here to come and participate in the communion elements at the front. Help yourself. Whenever you're ready, if you're comfortable, you're welcome to come up here. And we're just gonna sing a couple of songs and just allow you a few minutes just to seek the Lord and hear from Him. And if there's someone here that needs prayer, I know that I will be up here and also at your tables, amongst your tables, pray with one another. Encourage one another. If there's something going on, there's a fear that you know This is the time just to bring it to our God. Jesus, who already won the victory, has already prepared the table for us and just awaits. So let's just spend time just worshiping him. I'll come back up at the end and finish up, okay?
Give it all to him, ladies. I surrender all. I surrender all to you. The final verse says, verse 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The psalm ends with the calmest assurance that we can enjoy his presence of the Lord forever, both in the days on this earth and beyond. So ladies, let's live fearless trusting that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Thank you. Hi, my name is Pastor Gerald Hagerman from Joshua Springs Calvary Chapel right here in Yucca Valley. Hey, I want to take a moment and speak to you about your child's education. You may not be aware, but the California legislature has recently uh, passed a host of anti-family, anti-Christian, anti-biblical indoctrination bills that will be forced upon all students in our government public schools. Now what's particularly disturbing about this is there is no opt-out for parents. So you as a parent do not have a choice to withdraw your students out of these things. And it starts as young as second graders teaching them things that you as a family would not want taught from the truth of God's word. And so my friends, we offer hope here at Joshua Springs. And first of all, there's some great teachers out there in the public system, we pray for them. But here at Joshua Springs Christian School, we have tried to develop an opportunity that anyone that wants to rescue their children from this forced indoctrination have an opportunity to do so. So we have three different ways that you can be involved at Joshua Springs Christian Schools. The first is our traditional K through 12, which is an accredited school. We actually have the exact same accreditation as the Morongo Unified Schools. We have a higher accreditation with a Christian organization as well. So we're duly accredited. We also have a wonderful 
preschool program that you can be a part of. Secondly, for our high school students, we have an accredited independent study program, which means this, that your student will meet with an accredited teacher, receive the assignments, turn them back in, and it's a wonderful way to have an independent study program that they then can still qualify for CIF sports, for our music, for all the other extracurricular activities that we have here at Joshua Springs Christian School. The third way to be involved, if you prefer to homeschool, we have the JSA. It is a homeschool academy. The advantage that we have with our homeschool academy is that there are ways to be able to integrate into our K through 12 school for the special things that you as an individual parent cannot offer your child in a homeschool situation. There are some school situations that you can be a part of. So that's awesome. Now we also have two ways to pay. First of all, uh, we have our traditional tuition. You know, you, you can go to any church that you want. It's traditional tuition, which is the lowest of any place around. We've always tried to keep our tuition as low as possible. And so you can call right now, 760-365-3599 to find out more information on that. Our tuition for our K through 12 school is $499 a month. Our second way, and it's something that we came up with last year, it is our Matthew 19, 14 plan, straight out of God's word. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for if such is the kingdom of heaven. And it always broke my heart that as a church family here, we had people within our church family that still couldn't afford to have their kids go to the Christian school here at Joshua Springs. So here's a way, and the way that we came up, it's called our Matthew 19, 14 plan, based upon this scripture, let the little children come to me. And here's how it works. If you attend Joshua Springs on a regular basis, that means like 40 times a year, you also find areas of volunteering. So so whether you have skills that, uh, you know, professional skills that you can donate or you're a Sunday school teacher or an usher or you help in a classroom or you help with the sports programs, there's a host of things, 40 hours a year for your family to be able to be a part of that. And then you tithe, then your children can come tuition free because that way everyone is working towards it. It's a, it's a level playing field for everyone. So whether you make a lot of money or a little bit of money, whether you have one child or multiple children, it is a way that you can do this. We started it last year and it's working. So I want to invite you, if you would like to check out Joshua Springs Christian School, you can go online and check us out, or you can give us a call 760-365-365. $35.99. But I encourage you, as Christian parents, to give your children the best. They're, they're the most valuable thing that you have. And we now have made an opportunity to broaden that door to allow people to come. So again, we have three ways to attend. Our regular on-campus, K through 12. And if you have preschool kids, we also have a preschool. We also have before and after school care. So if you have to work and don't get here uh, right when school's out, there's an opportunity for that too. We also have our independent study program for our high school, which is awesome because they can still be a part of the CIF sports, our music, all the other extracurricular activities that we have. And then we have our wonderful JSA homeschool association, which can integrate in to the school for those things that you as an individual can't be a part of. And again, we have two ways to be able to pay. And one one is traditional tuition. You just pay your tuition. The other is if you're a part of our Joshua Springs family. By attending, by volunteering and tithing, tuition is waived for your students. So pray about it, my friends, and I encourage you, give your students the absolute best Christian education that you can. One last point on this. 
It is a mandate of God from his holy word, from the book of Deuteronomy. We are called to raise up our own children. The very words of Jesus himself, let the children come to me. And we have prayed, we have come up with plans to open that door so that your kids can be a part of a great Christian education. And if you want to be a part, again, give us a call, 760-365-3599. Hey, God bless you. This is Audrey Heather with Joshua Springs Cabra Chapel. And I want to thank you so much for being a part of our ministry. And we would like to give you a special gift today. Now, if you want to help support this ministry, you can go to www.joshuasprings.org. Once you're on the JS website, click Simple Give under the Donate tab. Donate any amount to our television radio ministry, and we will send you a copy of our latest Joshua Springs worship album. Once again, we just want to thank you so much for your support of this ministry. And we pray that our ministry and this new worship album will bless you greatly. Glory, glory.